This message is brought to you by Journey Life Church. Visit us today at journeylife.church or find us on Facebook. All right, so um, if you could turn in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 91. If you actually have your Bible here, you can turn to it. If you have your phone and you have the Bible app, that's good too. That's what I'm going to use this morning. Uh, so as Pastor Chris said, today we're going to be talking about angels. We're doing this supernatural series because it's October and Halloween and stuff. Um, but we've come to the conclusion basically in the past couple of weeks that we don't see everything that's going on, that there's a spiritual realm that we cannot see. And like Tim spoke last week, there's spiritual warfare. There's, there's a war going on in the unseen, in the spiritual realms. And Pastor Chris spoke the week before about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit strengthens us and does all great kind of great things in our lives. And so today, like I said, we're going to be talking about angels, God's spiritual beings, God's heavenly host. So we're going to read Psalm chapter 91. And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, verse 1, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. All right, let's pray this morning before we get started. Dear Jesus, we love you. And... We are all here because we love you, Lord. So I pray that this morning that you would just speak to us, that as we get a better understanding of your angels, Lord, that we would take this knowledge with us and we would be encouraged and reassured that you are for us and not against us. And I pray that no matter what happens, Lord, I pray that we would just take the words that we hear today and we would take them with us and that we would remember them even when troubles, sickness, and hard times come. Lord, I just pray that we would just remember your love for us, and you loved us first, and so we love you back, Lord. So I pray that we would just continue to live in that day by day, and I pray that you would just bless this time here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So has anyone ever seen this show, Touched by an Angel? So if uh, you turn your eyes to the screen, these are the angels in Touched by an Angel. You have an Irish woman, a black woman, and a white man. So obviously that's what angels look like right? <laughs> but it was really actually, the, the, the message behind the show is actually very powerful. You know, these angels uh, come down um, to earth as human beings, and then they help those who really need it. And when they, when they reveal that they're angels, this light, come, this golden glow comes upon them. I'm an angel. Ah! So it's actually very, good, like, the, the message of the show is really good. But what about, um, has anybody seen the movie Angels in the Outfield? If you look, we have an angel helping a batter, and I think that's what God's doing for the Cleveland Indians right now, am I right? (laughs) Finally, he's heard our prayers, but uh, the Browns have no hope. God doesn't care about football. (laughs) Obviously, this movie means that he cares about baseball and baseball only. So we, we have that perception of angels as well. What about It's a Wonderful Life? Who's seen that movie? It's a good movie. And in this movie, I don't know if you can see that very well. That's um, the main character. And Clarence, the angel. And every time a bell rings, an angel gets, it. gets its wings. Exactly. And Clarence hadn't gotten his wings yet until he helped out 
Um, I forget the guy's name. What's his name? The character's name, I meant. Oh. Well, that's the angel's name. I don't remember his name. But it's okay. George. Yeah, George. That's, yes. Yes, George Bailey. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, I used to watch these Bible uh, cartoons when I was a kid. And here is a picture of an angel from one of those. And that's kind of I think that's Gabriel. And uh, he's kind of creepy looking. His eyes are like white. They're not even, they don't even have a color. Um, so there's another perception of angels we have. And then they came out with this Bible series. Anybody watch a portion or any of the Bible series? It was pretty good. And uh, this is an angel that I believe that's Gabriel, again, from the Bible series. And you can't see, you can't see, but he's wearing actually armor underneath his red robe. Um, so... Um, and all the angels, the other angels, and they were different races. There was an Asian man, a black man, you know. There were different races and stuff. So it was pretty cool to see that perception of angels as well. And they were, all wore the armor underneath the um, cloaks. And uh, seeing them in the fighting scenes was really cool. Like, they were, like, crazy good at fighting with swords and stuff. It was awesome. Anyway, so what about the famous paintings we see that include angels or the greeting cards you know, you have little Cupid who's supposed to, you know, who's kind of like an angel who has wings. You, you see these naked angels with wings in these famous paintings and everything. And, you know, this is where we get our perceptions of angels from these movies, from these paintings. Um, but we're going to look at what the Bible says about angels today. So a lot of these perceptions don't exactly line up with what the Bible says. So we're going to see what we can find out here. So according to scripture, angels are God's servants. They do God's bidding. They are so fierce that they can kill thousands of people at one time, and yet they are so gentle that they can protect a small child. They are supernatural beings created by God and for, for God. So we're going to answer a couple basic questions today about angels. So the first is, who exactly are angels? And I already kind of already answered that. They are spiritual be beings created by God and for God. But there are three things that angels are specifically. One, angels are worshipers. So wherever you find God or Jesus, you will always find them worshiping them. In uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, it says, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. So angels are worshipers, and we are worshipers as well, right? We, we, we worship our Lord. So we're kind of similar to angels in that respect. We worship God, and they worship God as well. Second thing angels are, angels are warriors. They're fierce warriors battling on behalf of God. So God is like the general, and then the angels are his soldiers. In Scripture, Daniel prayed for God's help at one point, and this is what happened. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, it says, then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. This is an angel speaking to him. Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was attained there with the king of Persia. King of Persia is a, is a demon, is an evil spirit um, who came on behalf of Satan. But um, how many times do we do that? We pray, and maybe God sends an angel, but maybe he's detained by something coming against him because Satan doesn't want us to be helped. Satan doesn't want us to be strengthened. And it says here, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself. Since the first day your words were heard and an angel responded. So I believe that's true with us too. The first time that we come to God and we humble ourselves wanting understanding, our words are heard but we might not get the answer right then and there because he's sending an angel to us to give us that understanding, to minister to us. But there was some opposition in the, in the journey there. There was some opposition with, with another, um, with the evil one. In Revelation, it talks about a war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And Frank Peretti uh, wrote a book called This Present Darkness and it's all about spiritual warfare and he talks about angels and demons uh, battling it out over a town called Ashton. 
And I'm going to read a little part of the story here. It says, The evil warriors in the cloud steadily settled downward upon the town, but now their eyes were dazzled by the sudden appearance of one lone angel tracing brilliant, brilliant streaks of light across the sky below them. And what was this horribly loud trumpet all about? Were not the heavenly forces already defeated? Did they dare think they could possibly defend this town? Suddenly, tiny bursts of light appeared all over the town far below, flashes that did not dissipate but remained and grew brighter. They thickened and grew in numbers and density. The town was on fire. It was disappearing under my rays of tiny lights, as numerous as grains of sand. It was blinding. The eerie screams began at the center of the cloud and rippled outward, outward across the layers upon layers of demons, the hosts of heaven. Thunderous shouts began the moment the captain touched down on his hill and raised his blazing sword high above his head. For the saints of God and for the Lamb, they all shouted it. My raids of heavenly warriors shouted it, and the entire landscape from one end of the valley to the other, the entire town, and even the forested hills surrounding Ashton erupted in brilliant stars. From the buildings, streets, alleys, sewers, lakes, ponds, vehicles, rooms, closets, nooks, crannies, trees, thickets, and every other imaginable hiding place, flaming stars shot into the air, the host of heaven. The descending cloud of demons and the rising fireball of angels began to collide in the skies over Ashton. Thunder began to rip the sky in response to the terrific clash of the spiritual forces. Swords flashed and a hail of screams and shouts echoed across the sky. The heavenly warriors mowed through the ranks of demons like blurring skies. Demons began to fall out of the sky like meteors, spinning, smoking, and dissolving. Now that's a fictional story, but I believe that that actually happens in the, in the spiritual realms. We can't see it, but the heavenly hosts of heaven are warriors. And the third thing angels are, are messengers. I wish it started with a W. Worshippers, warriors, messengers. You just turn the W upside down, it becomes an M. So over and over again in, in scripture, when you see an angel show up, they, use, they come with a message. It happens a lot. And it's a message from God for God's people. A great example of this is in the book of Judges when Gideon was afraid. In Judges chapter 6, verse 12, it says, When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And sometimes we just need that little bit of reassurance, right? We're feeling down. The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Because we are warriors too, are we not? We battle against the spiritual forces too. And we battle the physical forces as well. One of the most famous messages of an angel giving a, giving a message is in Luke chapter 1, verse 30 and 31. An angel appeared to a teenage virgin girl named Mary and told her that she was pregnant with the Lord's child. And it was the message about the birth of our Savior. So angels are worshipers, warriors, and messengers. Those are three specific things that they are. So what exactly do angels do? They do a lot of stuff, but we're going to look at, again, three specific things. Angels often give us direction. So we talked about how Mary was told by an angel that she was pregnant with God's child, and uh, she's going to give birth to the Savior of uh, the world. Well, she had a fiancé named Joseph. And we can all imagine how Joseph was feeling when he found out that his fiance was pregnant. Matthew, 19, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verses 19 through 20, says, Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet, did, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So an angel of God appeared to Joseph and gave him direction. Joseph had, one, he had the decision to divorce Mary quietly, but an angel showed up and said, no, no, do this instead. Don't be afraid to do this, to go through with this. Another example of angels giving direction is in Numbers chapter 22, book of Numbers chapter 22. It's the story of Balaam and his donkey. It's one of my favorite stories. I think it's hilarious. So... Balaam was going, he was on his donkey, he was going out with the princes of Moab, and God didn't like that decision that he had made. So God sent an angel to stand in the road to oppose him. So an angel is standing in the road, the sword in his hand. And Balaam can't see him, but the donkey can see the angel. So the donkey, when he sees the angel, gets scared and goes off the road. And Balaam gets furious, and he starts beating the tar out of his donkey. So they get back on the road, and they keep going. Second time, an angel stands in the road, and the, and the donkey gets scared again, and he tried to go around the angel, but there was like a cliff wall or something, and 
uh, Balaam like struck his foot on it and gosh that really hurt dang it you darn donkey starts beating the crap out of the donkey again third time ba uh, Balaam's donkey goes off course because he sees the angel again and, Bala and the donkey just lies down he's like I'm giving up he's like I'm not going over there that's scary and Balaam again gets really mad and starts beating the donkey again and so God has the donkey speak for himself and the donkey says something like, why did you beat me these three times? Have I not served you well over the last few years? Like, really, dude, what are you doing? And what's funny is Balaam doesn't even, like, pause a second. He just talks back to the donkey like <laughs> it's, it's a regular thing that, that happens all the time. And when, when, he, when he starts talking back to the donkey, all of a sudden God opens his eyes and he can see the angel. And Balaam falls on his face because he is terrified. And Numbers 22, verse 32 through 33 records that the angel said, um, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is a, re is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared the donkey. <laughs> and that's scripture, people. God said it. God has a sense of humor, guys. But... Here we, we see this guy who is really trying to do something here. He's got his mindset on he's going to do it. But he, he, he's running into these roadblocks. And how many times do we do that? And, and it says here that the path is a reckless one before him. So if we're standing on our path and we have a certain way we want to go, but we can't see that it's reckless up ahead and that it's dangerous and God doesn't want us to go down there, what if the roadblocks we hit, what if the, the opposition that we hit when we're going down there is an angel actually standing in the road to oppose us, to make us turn the other way, to give us direction, and to say, go back. This is, this is dangerous. Go back. God, God can use angels to give us direction. The second thing angels do, angels protect us from danger. And a lot of people ask, do I have a guardian angel? The Bible doesn't say that you, you have a guardian angel. It doesn't say that specifically. But angels do protect us. So I guess there, there are guardian angels, but they're not specifically assigned. You don't have a specific angel. God can send whoever he wants to. But Psalm, like we read in Psalm 91, verses 11, 12, it says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So another great example of this is... Um, uh, when Peter was in prison for preaching about Jesus, Herod would, would execute him at any time. It was, you know, bound to happen. But one night when he was in prison, an angel woke him, and the chains fell off of his wrists. And the angels told him to get dressed, put your cloak around you, and get out. And so uh, Peter was able to escape death because God sent an angel to protect him, to get him out. And in Acts chapter 12, verse 11, it says, Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know that... that yeah, I'm sorry. Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping to happen. Now there may come a time in your life that you can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know an angel was there protecting me. And a lot of people do say that. And when I, I was in, the ho in and out of the hospital a lot earlier this year. And there was one time where I was in the hospital for a week straight. And I really believe, I didn't see an angel in my room, but I really believe that there was a, a heavenly being in my room comforting me in my times of despair, comfort, like wiping my tears away, making me feel that I was safe and that I would be okay. And I really believe that with how many times I was in and out of the hospital that a, that a demon of sickness had, his clutches, had me in his clutches. And I really believe that prayer strengthens these angels. And the more people that prayed for me, the stronger that the angel got and was able to battle that for me and I was able to come out of that alive and I really believe that and if you you are battling sickness if you are battling financial problems if you are seeing anything that that could that's a spiritual thing too you know spiritual things come into our lives and they do that but if you have the more people praying for you the better you can pray yourself and that strengthens the angels but the more prayer cover you have the stronger the angels get the more numerous they get and they can defeat evil for us. Now, there's another story. A long time ago, this is about my Uncle Jeff, and uh, he was working on his uh, Mustang with my Grandpa Al one day. And it was really hot, and they had to go get a, uh, Grandpa Al had to go get a, another part for the, 
for the car. And so Uncle Jeff thought to uh, cool off, he would take a ride on his motorcycle without his helmet. So um, the store was very far away, and Al goes around the corner, and he sees Jeff standing there in the grass, holding up his bike, talking to this girl. And Jeff liked to talk to girls, so that wasn't really out of the ordinary. <laughs> so um, before Al got back from the store, uh, Jeff had actually wrecked his motorcycle. And he pushed his bike home, his motorcycle home, and he went in the house, and Terry was home, and he, he kept asking three questions over and over and over again. What time is it? Did I wreck my bike? Do I have a date tonight? Those were the three questions he asked over and over and over again. And Terry started getting freaked out. So she called Grandma Kathy. And, um, and so she you know, was like, wow, that's really weird. Maybe we should go to the hospital. Al came home then and found out what was going on. So they met Kathy at the hospital. And uh, the doctors there thought Jeff was dr on drugs or <laughs> consumed a lot of alcohol. Uh, but it turned out he had a really bad concussion. So after they get Jeff home from the hospital, he um, is recovering and everything. Uh, Al and Kathy tried to find this girl that he was talking to. They canvassed the whole neighborhood and they couldn't find her. And to this day, we believe that it was an angel who he was talking to, an angel protected him from getting seriously hurt or even killed on his motorcycle. And to this day, Jeff still can't remember from the time he got on his bike to the time he got to the hospital. Yeah, until that night at the hospital. He, can't rem he doesn't remember anything that happened between that time. And I, I wasn't there, but I believe that an angel sa saved his life that day. So you never know how many times God is doing something supernaturally to protect us or those we love. And angels can actually show up, like we mentioned with this story, show up looking like human beings, like in Touched by an Angel and with the story about Jeff. And that, that's crazy. But it happens. In Genesis, in two chapters, 18 and 19, this happens a couple times. Chapter 18, three guys show up to where Abraham and Sarah uh, pitched their tent. And um, Abraham, you know, said they were guests. But I think in his spirit, he really believed that they were something more. Um, but he asked Sarah to make them a meal and offered them to stay for the night. But they were there to talk to Abraham about what was going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah. Or, no, 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 sorry. They were there to, I, I'm getting confused. They, um were there to talk to Sarah about, to Abraham and Sarah about the child that they were gonna be bringing into the world the next year. They were there to confirm that. And then in chapter 19, Lot, who is Abraham's nephew, was in Sodom, and two guys came to his house one day and he thought they just needed a place to stay, but no, they were angels getting him and his family out of Sodom before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse two, it says, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. So how many times have you given money to somebody on the street or to just somebody in general or helped somebody out that you didn't really know? Could have been an angel. But in any form, angels protect us. God sends his angels to protect us. And the third thing angels do, angels can minister to us. They minister God's love and healing and power to us. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, it says, not all angels, or Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? They are ministering spirits. A very powerful example of this is when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, and this was just hours just before his crucifixion. And he was praying, and he said, God, if there is a way, take this cup of suffering from me. And he was so anguished, and it was so intense that he was actually sweating blood as he was praying. And Luke chapter 22, verse 43 says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And then right after that, Jesus was able to say, yet not my will, but yours be done. So an angel came and strengthened him. And angels can do that for us now. And some, some of us might have a vision of where our life, where we want to go with our lives, uh, like teenagers and, you know, graduating teenagers, you know, where, what are you going to do? What are you, you going to be? You might have a vision of that but you, you're scared and you might, um, you don't see how it's gonna come about, but God can send an angel to, to comfort you and to, to strengthen you in that. You might be struggling with temptation and sin, but God can send an angel to protect you from those thoughts that bring you to temptation or bring you to sin. And, he, and an angel can strengthen you to overcome. And some of us may be just physically exhausted, emotionally and spiritually as well. 
But God can send an angel to give us power and strength. And the Holy Spirit comes and gives us strength and power to carry on. So angels, they give us direction, they protect us, and they minister to us. We live in a physical world, but there is an equally real and maybe even more important spiritual world where the forces of darkness battle against the forces of light. The kingdom of God against the plans of the evil one. And we battle not against flesh and blood, but also against spiritual forces. We have the armor of God, like Tim spoke about last week, to help us with that. But angels are also there to fight for us and to fight alongside of us. We are fully equipped to fight alongside angels. And we fight from a position of strength. Like we said last week, we fight from victory, not for victory. We already have the victory in Jesus. So we just need to power through it, pray through it, and fight through it. So the servants of God, angels... They're worshipers, warriors, and messengers, and he assigns them to help us by giving direction, by protecting us from danger, and by ministering to us when we need it most. All we have to do is ask God for these things, direction, protection, and strength, and he will do it. And let's have Psalm chapter 91, verses 11 and 12 remind us of God's care for us and how his angels fit in with that care. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Let's pray this morning. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this message this morning. And I pray that we would leave here with a better understanding of angels.